Hey, everybody. I am here with Jeffrey Hazlett, global, global business celebrity, super duper rock star, multi best selling author. Jeffrey, welcome. Hey, it's good to be here. Thanks so much. You know, I'm here in my hotel room in Florida. This was so important. I had to link up before I go catch a flight. So, glamour of life on the road. Glamour, yeah. glamour, glamour. Exactly. So, I just want to say that your latest book, your latest book, Think Big, Act Bigger, totally, completely awesome. Oh, thank you so much. And even before we started the recording, I, I showed you kind of little post-it flags along here. Uh, there are flags, and then there are pages where I just jumped up out of my chair, did a fist pump, and said, hell yes, we have preacher, brother. You got it. That's it. I love it. So, yeah. you know, let, let me take you back, because this is part of thinking big. Uh, even before this book came out, maybe even a year before this book came out, uh, I heard you speak in New York City, and you referred to this book in progress as my next bestseller. Yeah. Not my I, next book, not my yeah. next project, my next bestseller. So let's start with that as a launching point. How, I mean, how did you come up with that, that incredibly positive, uh, can-do, kick-ass, take-names kind of thing, and then how do you apply it to projects like this? That, that yeah. you know, it, it worked because a year later, boom, here you are, top of all the charts. Yeah, four, 400,000 copies later, you know, and, and, and still going to print. So, and this is what, been about uh, eight or nine months since we launched. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, you, you outlined it right there in your book. It's right behind you. Do it marketing. You do it. You have to do it. It's one thing you have a plan, but the second thing you have to do is do it. And the biggest thing for a lot of folks that don't understand about a book there will be 3 million new business titles out this year. Of the 3 million new business titles out this year, just in North America, before we even go to print, we pre-sold like about 80,000 copies. So we know we're going to hit a bestseller. We know that that's what we're going to do. We start that a year ahead of time before the book comes out. A lot of people think when the book comes out, that's when my work really begins. Uh-uh. Your, your work begins an, a year before and your work begins the day after it comes out you really have to start to work. It's not the end of the thing, it's the beginning of the journey. And you have about 18 to 24 months in order to really make the difference. For the most part, you need to make it in the first couple of months. Uh, the good news is as well, we did a deal with Barnes and Noble, and Barnes and Noble gave away a copy of our book with the purchase of every single new Samsung Nook. That accounted for 80,000 copies right there in the first three months on top of what we pre-sold. So it was pretty good. We knew, we knew what we were gonna get. Wow, 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 wow. Well, let's do this. So that's, that's kind of like the current think big, act bigger, you know, the, the empire as it stands today. One of the most impressive things when I saw you speak in New York is, you know, people look at you today and they say, oh yeah, he's a big guy, you know, CMO, C-suite TV. He's got all this, he's, he has this empire, but I can't do that. The part that they missed, the part that they missed, I think, is that you started on this journey back in 1986. Oh yeah, I've been a member of the National Speaker Association for a long, long time. In 1986, I was 26 years old. I was, a, actually I wasn't even 26 yet. I was 25 at the time when I joined NSA. And I started that journey with Schleppen. You know, I used to take my daughter, who was five, six years old with me on the road. And she, would, she was my person who sold tapes in the back of the road. A lot of people know my daughter, Lindsay now, is working with me. My son. Tyler is the business manager, so we've got the whole family involved and another 20, 30, 40, 50 people. But, you know, we, uh, but we started just like everybody else. I mean, you know, and I still make phone calls. I still make so many emails a day out to people and do the things you have to do, and you have to do it every day. So talk to us about just sort of the chapter-by-chapter -chapter evolution of Jeffrey 1.0, 2.0. Now you're about 17.0, I think. But talk about kind of how you started and how the whole story sort of evolved because you did that very mindfully there was I mean obviously yeah. stuff happens to all of us but you had a very mindful plan maybe not from day one but as things started to roll forward uh, walk us through that yeah you know I, I would think my life up until Kodak up until I became a fortune 100 officer was all about driving business and doing my own businesses I bought and sold over 250 businesses in my career and then as I I started making my way through. I started adding more and more zeros and got to be running billion dollar companies instead of million dollar companies or multi-million dollar companies. And then I went to Kodak. And when I was at Kodak, I said, look, the average length of a tenure of a CMO 
of, of a Fortune you know, 1000 company, I was a Fortune 100 company, was 18 months. So I knew in less than two years, I'm getting fired, you know, or I've got to get out. I mean, that's just the numbers. And so knowing that, I said, look, what am I going to do while I'm there? Now, I ended up staying for four years, which is fairly phenomenal at that time. Uh, it's, it's less so now because more and more people are, it's longer and longer today, but there was very volatile times at that time. And so we're talking about, about six years ago and I stayed and while I was there, I said, look, I, when I leave, I'm going to start up the Jeff Hazlett brand again. I'm going to go out and do a television show. Cause I'd been doing three years as a judge for celebrity apprentice. I had the knack for it. I knew that, you know, they were always calling me, wanting me to do things. And I said, I'm going to go do that. And it took me three years from the time I left Kodak. Okay with all the resources that I had to get that show on the air. And then I, I, I created what we call, we call it a brand of Jeff Hazlett in, in, internally. That's what we call it. We treat myself like a third party and a separate product. And we market it just exactly like that. And then, but then you also have, you've got like online platforms, you've got a PR yeah. firm. You have, so how did all of that start yeah. to spring up? Yeah. And, yeah. and how do you stay focused? Yeah, well, you guys got to, get to have good people, and you have to have good goals, good what I call conditions of satisfaction, which I write about in the book. So having what I want to be able to do. So, you know, I said I, I need to have a business that can generate me some cash while I'm building that Jeff Hazlett business because, you know, that's, that's okay, but it doesn't, it's not going to get me great wealth in order to get wealth. So I said I'm going to start Tallgrass, which is our PR firm. That generates the cash. Then I said, as we do that, we had in mind that we're going to create what we call the C-suite network, a most trusted network for executives, higher end executives. Those, you know, VPs are above at $5 million or above. And this is about 3 million businesses in North America. And we were going to aim at building a network. So we have one content that we create. I create a great deal of content. A lot of it comes from people like you and others that we also generate, have a community that we serve and sell it to and a engine that sells it to them in essence delivers it up and that's what we did so we created the ecosystem the community for that and and then we go out and get the content and we monetize it all every bit of it yeah no absolutely well and from a personal perspective i love that you say that you have help because you know people need to know that at some point your business has to scale above and beyond you one of the things uh, out of many 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 is the pyramid right the triangle that is the, the most more sum. And yeah. looking at yours, I'm like, oh my God, he's, this is what he's focusing on. Imagine all the stuff he's not able to focus on. So yeah. talk about most more in sum and how that has been a lifesaver. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, a lot of people have to, you know, flip the triangle over and put the most important things at the top and, you know, next and least important and then least, least important at the very bottom. You know, all important because they make the triangle, right? You know what your goals are. But I said, look, Let's put this over so visually I can see how much time I should be spending on those things as opposed to what's the, the ranked importance. And that gives me a visual representation. I'm a very visual person of saying, I need to spend more, you know, if I have both tier pyramid, I got this pyramid and I got the inverted pyramid, and this is, you know, this is my time. I take the tiny little things at the very top, most important, I spend the most time on those. And, you know, and I, I fail at it all, all the time, too. I, you know, squirrels, squirrels pop up all the time, and then I get distracted every day. I mean, I, I got to get through today because today I've got to spend a lot of time getting that, the killing squirrels, getting rid of these squirrels that are on my desk to focus more of my time on the fewest number of things because if I'm doing that, I'm driving the business. And that's a very, very important lesson I learned a long time ago. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I love the whole, there's a whole chapter, there's a whole section about kill the squirrel. Uh, and yeah. it's great that you acknowledge that even today, as hugely successful as you are, as busy as you are, when you'd think, well, I'm really busy with these high priority projects, there's no more squirrels. There's always going to be squirrels. Yeah, let me give you a good example. I, I'm about to raise a small fund for some of the stuff that we're going to do because I wanted to have some more cash coming in. So it's a couple million dollars, not a big amount, you know, still a couple million bucks. So for a couple of months, we were saying, okay, we're going to do it, going to do it, and going to do it. And finally, my CEO uh, partner said, when are, you, when are you going to get serious about this? Right. And I went, crap. Okay, squirrel. Kill the squirrels. And, and then, uh, you know, I sent out 40 letters. We raised over a million dollars in two days, okay? And I've got to go send out a few more letters, which are going to go out today. And, and I'll raise the rest of it by the weekend. And that, that we're, hello, I should have done that two weeks ago. I should have done that two months ago. And it's really that simple. And, and there's, you know, in the book, there's pages and pages of excuses that we hear from other people or that we create ourselves. 
we're our worst enemies. You know, if, if you want to do more in sales as a speaker, pick up the freaking phone, D do more emails, um, get out there and, 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 and make cold call prospect, do whatever you have to do. Just do it. And no one's putting a gun to your head and saying, I'm going to shoot you if you do that. And, and, and we are our own worst enemies and, and not just speakers, but everybody in general, human beings. That's, that's just what we do. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so funny. When I read this book, part of the reason that I'm fist pumping and bookmarking, I read, the, I read the first half of the book on the plane, and then I read the second half in the hotel room when I landed because it was that. It's so fast-paced. And again, you know, we're on the same wavelength, so I'm like, yes, buddy, yes. Yeah. Um, no one's going to die. No <laughs> one's going to die is one of my favorite concepts. It's like, you know, just as you're saying, you know, pick up the phone, you know, dream big, you know, do implement big, uh, act as if, right? Act as yeah. if. That's not, right. and there's a difference there between what we all hear is a fake it till you make it. This no. is not about faking it. This is about doing it so that yeah. you make it. Right, exactly. And the action if, if you're faking it, that's, that's a, if, you're, if it's a faking it, that's your brand. People know it. They sense it. They smell it. They taste it. Uh, you know, they see it. So you, you can't do that. It's about the doing and saying, no, we are going to stand for these standards. And sometimes, you know, when you do that, when you, when you, you make certain decorations and, and, and you do it, you, you sometimes lose. I mean, you go backwards. I mean, you have, you're going to say, I'm not going to take a fee cut. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And you have to balance some of those things. And sometimes you have to learn when I say, I'm not going to, well, I am going to this one time. You know, you have to learn to, you know, eat your words a little bit too, which is good. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk, let's talk about just some advice. Because, uh, you know, there is so much conflicted advice out there about speakers, consultants, experts, thought leaders, authors, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. So yeah. let's say that we're talking to somebody who's maybe in, in your shoes 10 years ago, right? Successful yeah. uh, executive or entrepreneur, they're looking at going out, starting their own show. What would be some do's and don'ts, some tips and traps as you see them in today's landscape? Number one, focus. So have a real focus on what you want to do. That's, I, I think we sp don't spend enough time. Two, your conditions of satisfaction. What is it you want to get out of the business? What are you willing to forgo? How much money are you willing to lose for the first year or two? Okay. How much pain are you willing? How much money are you willing to put on the credit cards? How much money are you want to, to borrow from family, friends, whatever you got to do to do your business? Now, if you're, if you're a speaker, I'll give you a good example. I love to do this one because everyone will say, well, you got to have this, you got to have that, you got to do that. And that's bullshit. You know, basically do what you want to do the way you want to do it. Now, is that right? Is it, the, is it the best way? Probably not. But you know what? It's the way you want to do it. And that's okay. You know, somebody was talking about their speaker sheet the other day. I was watching a, a forum and they, oh, it's a must have, must have. And I went, well, maybe I should get one. I don't know. I've never had it. So, so, you know, I, uh, uh, you know, I need a demo. No, you don't. I didn't have a video of my speeches for the first two years of me going out and doing this again six years ago. And so finally I put one together because it was kind of embarrassing not to have one. And I'm on television all the time and I should probably have one. So, so we threw one together. And, you know, one of the things that I, I just had the same conversation about the, 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 the video, you know, Speakers who are purely speakers and that do the kind of the speaker show, like the dog and pony show, they might need to have the video. They might have to have the video. Most of us, however, are problem solvers. And problem yep. solvers are not hired because, oh, did, did you see the special effects on that video? Problem solvers are hired because companies and associations and groups, they've got problems and they have, see you as the answer. So they bring you in. Right. And uh, it's about relevance. It's about value. And I love what you said about the, uh, the authenticity that you have to do it your way. Yeah, let me give you a couple more. I mean, my, my, my PR company and social media company that we own is called Tallgrass. And the slogan for it is, if you want to run with the big dogs, you've got to learn to piss in the tall grass. Now, some people are offended by that. If you're offended by it, that you're not the kind of customer client we want. That's, it's, it's there for a reason to state exactly who we are the attitude you're going to get and the way in which we're going to do it. I'll give you a couple other examples for speakers, what I think is great. You know, a lot of people say um, you, you should never speak for free. You, what are you, an idiot? I, in my opinion, look, I, I get invited by Intel Capital. All right. I've been the only speaker in their history of this summit that they put together. They've, I've been invited back three times over the last six years. And that is a group where there's 1,500 CEOs 
of some of the most successful companies in tech and they want me to speak on stage. Are you crazy? Of course I'm gonna speak for free because I walk off that stage, I book at least 10, 10 minimum speeches, full fare, full fee. I get in, invited to do consulting projects and I get invited to some boards and I just recently cashed out of one of those, okay? Which was significant money when they went to an IPO. So it was that, that's my marketing. And so that's my way of marketing to a specific group and getting in front. And oh, by the way, for the last two times that I've been there, I've, I've had another company buy my book and give the book to everyone with a book plate in it. And I did a book signing after my speech and I brought the client who paid for that in and they were, Intel was happy with that. So, you know, things like that, you shouldn't do this. I go like, I cringe when I hear people say you, you, you must, you cannot, you're stupid if you do. And I think you're stupid if you do it the other way. Yeah, absolutely. What else? What else is on the count? Do's and don'ts, tips and traps list. Well, you know, oh man, there's so many, there's, there's so many of, the, of them. I, I, I just really get back to the conditions of satisfaction. If you don't know what you want out of the business, then how are you going to get there? I, you know what? Another one for the speaking business. And, and for those that want to get into television or those that want to you know, be global business celebrity, whatever, what is it that you want? Do you want fame or do you want fortune? Which I think is a good way of being able to describe. For a lot of speakers, a lot of people, they, want, they really want fame. I say concentrate, for me personally, on fortune because if I make a lot of money and I do what I do well, I get known for that, which gives me the fame. And if I don't, I can buy it. You know, and yeah. that's what I tell a lot of folks that that's, the, that's one of the things you should do. So, so figure out that, you know, again, figure out what you want to do. You know, some people want to, you know, hug trees and, you know, change the world. I, I you know, I, I enjoy that. If that's a benefit of the, or an after, after effect of what I do. Awesome. Great. That's not usually my intent. My intent is to motivate and drive and do the things I do as a speaker. Well, let me ask you a little bit about C-Suite TV, because one of the things that as I'm observing, all these fabulous things that you're doing. Uh, C-Suite TV has so many collateral benefits, not collateral damage, but collateral yeah. benefits. So number one, you know, our friend Jay Bear talks about speaker as media company. Well, you yeah. are not only the media company, you're the media, you're the star, and you're the media company. Yeah. But so that, that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is basically interviewing your prospects. Mm -hmm. And the second, the second aspect is relationship building. Even if they're not prospects, they could become allies. They could become referral sources. They could okay. become influencers in your world. The, you know, the, the friendships develop. You know, the, initially business friendships become personal friendships. So talk about, uh, you know, whatever we're doing. We, we all have the capability of doing what we're doing right now, for example, yeah. interviewing people. Right. Now, I'm doing it on a smaller platform than C-Suite TV, but however, talk about kind of how you, how it's a really win, win, win for all concerned. It's a win for you. It's yeah. a win for the people that you interview and that you showcase. And it's a win for your audience and your By the way, client base. Uh, you know, you said a small, smaller platform. I, I don't get caught up on that. I mean, look, uh, you know, back behind me is Bloomberg. You know, I used to have a primetime television show on Bloomberg and uh, I, I took the show off the air. We put it, we took it off the air after the, we did uh, eight shows, which is one season, number one primetime show there was, number one show on Bloomberg. And, and now we're put that show online. Now, can we have more exposure to more people through broadcast? Yeah, you could say that, but yeah, we had more people watching us online than were watching us through broadcast. So it's really not about the eyeballs and ears. It's about the clicks. It's about the hearts and minds. It's about that one click that you need to someone to watch. So it doesn't have to be viewed by millions. It can be viewed by tens, you know, if it's in front of the right audience. And so what most people miss is the step and repeat nature of content or media that you do as a speaker or you do as a content creator is to take that piece. And it's like Henry Kissinger walking to a press conference and say, what questions do you have for my answers? You know, and, and you know where you want to take it. So you want to use that. So, and there are many times, quite frankly, it's a great example you said of the relationships you built and prospecting building. I did an episode on Dunkin' Donuts. Now, Dunkin' is now one of the sponsors of my CBS podcast. It's significant money, okay? It's, it's more, I get more money on that sponsorship 
than what most speakers earn in a year. To give you an idea, for my my weekly podcast, and I've got numerous other sponsors for that show, and that was a relationship that I built to the TV show. Yeah, and and then that just you know goes on and on and on. So that's a great great example. So find a different find a way, you know. And we're always in C Suite TV. We're looking for great content that wants to go to business audiences, and so we're looking for that content. We have C Suite Radio. We have the C Suite Book Club, which we've started. We've created bestseller TV so that we can highlight authors. You know, um, you, in some of it you, you you get it for free, and some of it you got to pay for because I'm looking to cover my cost. I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm gonna. We haven't announced this, but I'll announce it on your show. We're gonna we're moving to Apple TV. Roku, Hulu, um, Amazon Fire. So we're on all platforms. So not only you know are we on your you know your mobile phone, so you can come watch us here, watch us on the laptop, watch us online. But now we're going to be on the big screen too via those services. Absolutely, no, that's fantastic. By the way, I love my Roku. Roku is awesome. I'm so glad that you're doing all the the media boxes, the set top boxes. That's great. Yep. Talk a little bit about accessibility because here you are. You're in your hotel room. You're about to do some big. Fabulous thing. Uh, on social media, you are a super accessible guy. Super friendly, super responsive. In the real world, I'm guessing it is very tough to get on your calendar. So how do you, how do you balance uh, your own very precious, very valuable time with the accessibility and the approachability that you genuinely have and that you want to project? Yeah, it's a tough thing. You know, my team will tell you that they, they think I do too much of that. And they, they believe I take on too many appointments that I shouldn't be and talk to too many people that will never get us anywhere, which is probably the case. But at the same time, I, I, David, I think if you've got a sense for the last couple of years, I, I like to get back and I like to be there. somebody help me. You know, I used to sit in the back of the room when I went to NSA, you know, I sat in the back of the room with Zig Ziglar and Bill Brooks and Brian Tracy and some of the greatest speakers in the world uh, when I was 25, 26, 27 year old. And, and they helped me because I learned from them. I, I didn't go to many sessions because I used to sit in the back of the room and just listen to those people, Al Walker, and I can, you know, Terry Paulson, you know, I used to do all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I do spend more time today saying, what would you like to get accomplished? Okay. So I try to define what it is. I'll, sometimes they'll say, hey, I want to have a cup of coffee. Well, I used to never drink coffee. So I used to say, I don't drink coffee. What do you want? Now I <laughs> do drink coffee. So I say, look, I got to do more than just drink coffee. It's nice. If we want to drink coffee, catch me at the next NSA convention, catch me at the next social event and we'll catch up socially. I don't have time because I go to two or three events a night. And uh, especially when I'm in New York, you know, so because that's prospecting for us, that's work, that's visibility, that's me on the red carpet, that's me, you know, contributing to our brand, or it's me interviewing people, whatever we have to do. So, so we, we do spend more time again, does it, does it, and by the way, go back to the inverted pyramid, does it get in, does it fit one of my categories? If it doesn't fit one of my categories, I like you, but I'm going to miss you. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Well, and again, this is straight from, straight from the book, if you need, the, if, if you need help, ask and yeah. if someone asks answer and yeah. that answer is not always yes but that answer is that you'll do what you can when you can you're always happy to help and serve yeah and sometimes you, you know i it's hard to say no but you gotta say no i mean i can't help everybody you can't do that if you know there's people drowning you gotta you only have so many spots in the lifeboat there's only so many spots you can pick so it'd be great but you know you, you've got to make you got to make choices in life that's just the nature of the game yeah, absolutely. So final couple of questions. Uh, the last question is how can people stay in touch with you and connect with C-Suite TV and the book club and executive perspectives and all that great stuff. Before we get to that, let's look at the, the mid-career speaker, executive, thought leading, entrepreneur, author, et cetera. Uh, a lot of people are plateaued. You know, maybe they're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, but they're not getting the big stages. They're not on TV. They're not big on social media. They're sort of, you know, it's almost like they've been, they've been sabotaged by their initial taste of success. How do you break through that or what do you need to reboot or rethink or reimagine to, to, to be able to think big and act bigger when you've already had a little bit of success but you're flatlining? Yeah, by the way, don't think the TV is going to get you the success because it's not. 
it's just going to it's going to waste a lot of your time. You don't make a lot of money. You don't make a lot of money um, if you get your own show. I mean, you make about 10% of the production cost. So if it costs you $66,000 to produce an episode, you're going to make $6,000 for three days. I just, I just want to get you, you know, get very clear to people yeah. that you're not going to make a lot of money like that. And the exposure isn't just going to lead to what you want. So let's, I just want to say that. I know that. I don't have a million people call me, hey, I saw you on television. I want to hire you. You have to put the opportunity in front of them. Now, if you plateaued and you've been doing all this, you've been doing this, you've been doing this, you're not getting different, how about change it? Do something freaking different, okay? That's really what you got to do. And you got to do more of it. You know, it's like I use my people in my office. They say, well, it's cold inside. It's cold in the office. I say, well, work harder. You'll warm up. It's the same kind of thing here, you know? If you're plateaued, then you've got to push to get above it. You got to do something different. Mix it up, change it up. Time to reinvent your, you know, your look, your feel. Time to add some new uh, content to what you're doing. How about start twittering because you weren't doing that before? How about get engaging, you know, engage in the conversation engage in where you want to go that's what you got to do it's really it's not that difficult man say so it's right there in your book go get the book do it marketing it's right back there i can see it yeah right there that's the book go get that one and think big act bigger of course but 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 do it marketing right there man right hey we were separated at birth quite frankly one of us got looks and one of us got brains and we're never going to tell we're we're never going to tell <laughs> People with I, with. I like that. We will totally keep that under wraps. We'll totally keep right. that secret. So fi final question for my friend, Jeff Hazlett. How do people get more Jeff, more CCTV, uh, more executive perspectives, more content, more social media? How do we stay connected to you so we can stay inspired to yeah. think big, act bigger, kick ass and take names? Go freaking Google, all right? If you, it's just Hazel. Go look at Hazel.com. You can find everything from there. But you go to C-Suite Network. You go to C-Suite TV, C-Suite Radio, C-Suite Book Club. Uh, all of those are our sub-brands of our entire network. You're going to see a lot more about the network as we're rolling it out uh, over the summer of uh, 2016. We're really going to – we have about 200 and I think 25,000 executives already involved in it today. Uh, we're reaching over, you know, a million and a half to almost 2 million – uh, executives through our media each and every month, so which is awesome. And we're just really going to start ramping up. We're going to add zeros to so help us be one of those and get involved. Then there's lots of places for people who have content to come involved, and we'd love to get your content. We've got different roles that we're going to be announcing that people can play in that. You can certainly, I mean, if you got a book, we want to do bestseller, uh, or just list your freaking book. I mean, if you list your book on our website, it's, it's that simple. You just go there, register it, and you list it, and, and we get, by the way, we give everybody uh, this marketing kit. You know, I, you know, I've read your book, and I've read other books, and I you know, know the smarts. What we do is we give them things that they can go and implement right. when they list their book. And, and I just tell people, if you do that, you'll sell thousands of copies. Absolutely right. And I, I have to say, full disclosure, because I, I love this, uh, my book is, is, li is listed I've got on my book website the nice little black and green logo for C-Suite Book Club. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to be with you on stage doing a, an episode of Executive Perspectives. Yeah. So uh, the empire is just growing, and the beauty of it is that you're, you're building a community and you're sharing your platform. And if yeah. people want to get in on that at the free level, awesome. If they want to get in on the paid level, which is a lot more value, a lot more exposure, a lot more leverage, like 10 times more, uh, they can do that, but they don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Um, so but the good news is you get benefit from that. I mean, uh, hopefully you've liked the manual that we just recently, we just re I wrote it. I sat down and wrote it with the team. I got tired of it because everybody's saying, well, what should I do? How should I do this? How should I tweet? What should I tweet? What should I post? I said, get, put, put it up on the screen. And I said, now take this. And then I just started, I dictated it over two days with, uh, with one of our team members and we put it together. It's, it's awesome. And then, and I know that, you know, some authors have done the C-Suite Book Club and, and we've had them speak on our stage. That's what we do. We pull from that community. So again, we step and repeat the people who are trying to make it and be, and be bigger. And if you're trying to be bigger, we want you, we want, we, we want to help you and you help us. That's the way it works. Okay. You don't get anything for free. I don't give a crap what you say. It's never for free. That's one of my favorite concepts. I, my nickname for that is why your business needs to flop, which is feature and leverage other people. So feature is the give, 
and leverage and what, is the get, right? Feature and leverage other people. And you know, C-Suite TV and the whole book club, the whole C-Suite empire, the conferences uh, is a beautiful model of featuring and leveraging other people. Well, and people get, I, I can tell you, Sylvie, uh, Sylvia D'Augusto, you know her, and yeah. Ron Parr, Shep Hink, uh, Tony Alessandra, uh, all these guys have told us the gigs they've got as a result of being on stage or just being at the book signing event, you know, and then we do and we and then we do some workshops where we break them out in breakout sessions and the breakout sessions are unbelievable because that's where the execs that we have and we're talking about 27% of our audience comes from billion dollar companies or greater. 22% of our audience comes from 100 million or what we call mid cap market mid cap to a billion and 51% of our audience is between uh, five million to a hundred million in, in, in revenue, and those are the execs we have. And we—I can tell you how many are CEOs, how many are COs, how many are presidents, how many are CMOs, and so forth. And we we pull from that entire range, and and it's all there. It's all there. It's awesome. Fantastic. Closing words of wisdom from Jeffrey Hazlett. What's the the closing thought, the capstone idea that you'd like to leave in people's brains? Take a risk. No one's going to die. If you make a mistake and you're going to make mistakes, so what? We're, you know, so what? I don't care what business you're in, except for if you're operating on me or heavy machinery, okay? No one's going to die. So that's the biggest advice I can give to you. Love it. There you go. All right, my friend. Thank you as always. Awesome to have you. Thanks for having me.